What's going on everybody crazy dog back with another video and this will be my Browns Patriots week eight preview as my Browns are coming off the bye week and they're heading to Foxborough, Massachusetts Gillette Stadium to face off against the undefeated 7-0 New England Patriots who in case you haven't heard by now went out and acquired wide receiver Mohamed Sanu from the Atlanta Falcons earlier this morning. And that now gives that Patriots offense, not one, not two, but three guys who are going to be on the field at the same time who can throw the football. Of course, Tom Brady, duh, Julian Edelman, who used to be a quarterback in college, and of course, Mohamed Sanu. And then you add those guys to uh, the rest of the offense consisting of Josh Gordon, James White, some dude named Sony Michelle. You got Ben Watson and the rest of the tight ends. That offense is freaking nasty. And it just got even nastier with Mohamed Sanu. And the thing is, when Edelman and Sanu get the ball, defenses are going to be like, okay, what are they going to do with it? Are they going to take off with it like a receiver does? Or are they going to cock that sucker back and heave it downfield to a possibly wide open Josh Gordon. You know, that leaves a lot of question marks in the defense's head. It's got them thinking now. Now, uh, the Browns have that same thing as well with uh, Baker, Jarvis, and Odell. So uh, it's going to be really funny to see uh, what kind of wrinkles uh, these two offenses uh, have up their sleeves. You know, how many receiver passes are we going to see? I have a feeling we're going to see Jarvis throw a pass this week. We might see Odell try to heave it deep. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see Mohamed Sanu do it. We might just see all the receivers just try to throw the ball deep. <laughs> now, uh, for the Browns this week, it's simple. Run the ball. Give it to Nick Chubb. He's a beast. And uh, fun fact, the last time we beat the Patriots... We had Peyton Hillis. We really haven't had a running back like Hillis until now with Nick Chubb. And I expect them to uh, run Chubb at least 35 times around there. That is my key to success right there. You know, but uh, on the other side of the ball for the Browns, though, our defense is going to have their hands full. Luckily, we're getting Greedy and Denzel back. At least I hope so. You know, uh, if they can survive this week of practice without, uh, you know, turning an ankle or breaking a toenail or something, uh, I think will be good. But uh, it's looking like we're going to have our two top cornerbacks this week, which is huge because if we had to go out there this week with Money Mitch, who I love, by the way, I ain't hating on Money Mitch. He's a baller. But uh TJ Carey, on the other hand, yeah, um, he's not necessarily uh, that great. No, he's all right. He's serviceable. But uh, against uh, premier receivers, yeah, he's no match. Russell Wilson was bullying him in that game two weeks ago. He bullied TJ Carey. He picked on him like a schoolyard bully. And there was nothing TJ could do about it. <laughs> For real. You know, uh, but at least we're going to have Denzel and uh, Greedy back. Now, of course, you know, we get those two guys back and uh, there's a chance we will not have Demarius Randall, of course, you know, because of course we lose someone in the secondary when we get two guys back. We can never have nice things on this team, you know, but uh, I'm hoping that our front seven can at least get to Brady, put some pressure on him. Make him get rid of the ball before he wants to. And if our secondary can uh, cover their men long enough, that'll give Miles and Olivier time to get to Brady. And as we saw in the Super Bowl a couple years ago, if you can get to Brady, anything can happen. You know, I mean, with Miles Garrett's speed off the line, Brady is probably going to have at least like a second around there to get rid of the ball. I mean, he already gets rid of the ball super quick, but now he's going to have even less time because you got number 95 uh, coming in at you. And he's fast as hell off the line. You know, he gets a good jump, 
you have no shot. <laughs> and uh, Tom Brady isn't the most elusive runner. He just recently eclipsed 1,000 rushing yards. It took him damn near his entire career to do that. And if he tries to run away from Garrett, he's most likely going to run into Olivier Vernon, who hopefully can bring him down, which he should be able to. And if he tries to run into the pocket, he's going to run right into uh, Sheldon Richardson or Larry Ogunjobi or whoever's in the interior. And, of course, you have the linebackers, Mac Wilson, you know, uh, Joe Schobert, who honestly has been playing much better this year compared to last year. As um, Sure, he misses a couple tackles here and there, but he's doing way better. I still miss Kirk, although, you know. But uh, the big thing is our secondary against their receivers. Oh, yeah, big time. And, of course, we got to stop their running backs. they got a nice stable of backs there, and uh, they're going to be tough, especially Sony Michelle. You know, and uh, it's going to be a very tough game. You know, can't wait for it. Now, before I get into my three keys to victory, I got to give a quick shout out to uh, the Patriots fans on YouTube. Of course, you got Deshaun Parks. You've got uh, Byron, the Pats fan. You've got uh, my guy Bobby Montagna, a.k.a. Butcher's Block and Patriots Talk. You got Tyson, a.k.a. Master at Work, arguably the best editor on YouTube. Like, his editing is absolutely phenomenal. Best editor on YouTube, bar none, especially in the TTC. I think Renegade's, like, right up there, though. Those two guys are really, really good editors. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, um, yeah, shout out to all the Patriots fans out there. Uh, this should be a fantastic game. I'm hoping. Of course, watching the Patriots last night absolutely uh, – beat down on poor Sam Darnold and the Jets. I mean, we pretty much did the same thing to him. So, uh, you know, not really much of a measuring stick there. But, man, we cannot play like we did against the 49ers. If this offense does what they did against the Ravens, where we scored 40 on them and Chubb was running hard and he was just killing them, I think we got a shot. But I don't know. This is going to be a really, really interesting game. Because if we lose this game, sure, we got out of the toughest part of our schedule at 2-5, and five, but you look at the rest of our schedule, it's much more lenient, but that don't mean nothing. You know, we've got to play every game like, you know, it's, our, it's a big game for us. You know, I mean, 2-5, and five, I mean, the freaking Ravens, they're already 5-2. and two. God. Then you got the Steelers. They're playing the freaking Dolphins this week. God, we could wind up in third place if we're not careful. Now, I would absolutely love if we went into Foxborough and beat the Patriots, but yeah, uh, one does not simply go into Foxborough and beat them. Now, they have lost in Foxborough before, but in order to beat these guys in their house, we got to play damn near perfect. Mistake-free football. Oh, yeah. No penalties, no turnovers, keep Tom Brady off the field. Now, th that's going to be tough because uh, their defense is insane. You know, in past years, it would have been like, okay, you know, just beat up on their defense, keep Brady off the field. But it's like nowadays, it's like, oh, crap. Their defense is better than their offense. <laughs> but still, you want to keep Brady off the field and uh, wear out their defense. I mean, their secondary is going to have their hands full with our receiving core. And I'm sure uh, Chubb will be running hard. He's very, very hard to tackle. You know, and uh, I wish we had Cream Hunt this week. That would have been nasty. Hunt and Chubb running against uh, the Patriots. In fact, I'm pretty sure uh, Hunt had a pretty good game against the Patriots the last time he played them in the regular season. But, uh, yeah, three keys to victory for this game. Key number one. This is a big one. Be smart. Like I said. No turnovers. Keep penalties to a bare minimum. Don't be stupid. Especially you, Baker. You hear that, Baker? Don't be stupid. Man, dude has 11 interceptions this season, and he's facing a secondary that has forced 18 through seven weeks. Like, that's freaking insane. I have a feeling he's going to throw at least one. <laughs> 
but uh, hopefully that's the only one he throws. You know, we need to start throwing more touchdowns to our guys, not theirs, okay? It's, it's not that hard, <laughs> especially when you got Odell. You know, uh, you should be getting the ball, but we all know how Belichick operates. He's going to try to eliminate our best player, which is Odell. So uh, it's up to Jarvis and Callaway and Higgins. If Higgins even sees the field, which I think he will. But uh, we need the other guys on this offense to step up because they're going to eliminate Odell. I'm sure Odell will still get some good catches and everything because he's Odell. You know, you can double cover him and he'll still make a big catch. But uh, we need this offense to uh, break out this game. I would love to see another performance like we saw against Baltimore. I don't think we're going to drop 40 on these guys, but uh, hopefully it'll be a good game, you know. But, yeah, key number one is uh, play smart. Key number two is uh, protect the ball. That's a big one. You know, again, no turnovers. But uh, I guess you could say protect the ball goes with key number one. But it, it's also good for Chubb, too, because he fumbled. I think for the first time in his NFL career against the Seahawks. We need him to protect the ball, too. But we need to protect the ball and play smart. That essentially is like 1A and 1B. So my real key number two is to protect Baker. This offensive line has been low-key trash this year, and they need to uh, play better. Key number three, pretty much just play keep away, <laughs> essentially. Play keep away from Brady. Keep him off the field. Wear out that defense, you know? And um, we'll see what happens. Of course, last time we were in Foxborough, Billy Cundiff missed an attempted game-winning field goal after we were whooping that ass for the majority of the game, and then the Patriots cheesed us and came back thanks to a shoddy penalty. Um, it was on Joe Hayden, of course. And, um, yeah, of course, right? Of course. And uh, should be a good game, hopefully. Uh, player to watch in this game, I'm going to say players, secondary and Miles Garrett. There you go. The whole secondary and Miles Garrett. And then uh, prediction, well, I would love to say we win this game. Unfortunately, I think we're going to lose because we're facing the Patriots in their house. And um, by the way, if you haven't seen my shirt by now, um, you're blind. But uh, it says Cleveland against the refs. And that's the way it's been this year. The refs have been low-key trash as a whole. But against us, oh, they've had it in for us. Oh, my God. And I feel like there's going to be a couple calls that are uh, going to make me really mad. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They're going to uh, really be uh, – going against us in this game because the Patriots have this weird thing with the refs at home. The refs favor the Patriots at home. Yep. I like Miles Garrett will barely go team on Brady's helmet and they'll be like, flag, rough on the passer, defense number 95. Or, you know, our guy will touch him like right here trying to push and he'll be like, hands to the face, defense number 95. You know, and it'll be like, oh, of course. Again, play smart, guys. But uh, score prediction for this game, I'm going to say Patriots win very close. I'm going to say uh, – I'm going to say 28 to 14. I think it will be a seven-point game, and then Baker throws a turnover, and what do you know? They score on it, and the game's over. Yeah, that's the way I see. Yep, Patriots will uh, force a turnover, interception, and uh, they'll score off of that and pretty much put the game away. 28-14 Patriots win. That's my prediction. I know. I'm not a homer. I'm not saying we're going to kick the crap out of the Patriots. Oh, my God, crazy dog. You're not a real fan. No, I'm real. Like, I, I can see that the Patriots are freaking insane. And they're playing at home. If this was in the dog pound, I'd say Browns could win this game by like three points. But I don't think we're winning this game. Not in Foxborough. Hell no. When was the last time we won in Foxborough anyway? It's been a long time. Was it even like during this iteration of the Browns? I don't even know. But all I know, of course, is the Patriots do not lose at home. They barely lose at home. If you beat them at home, like, you really escape with a dub. For real. Look at the Panthers a couple years ago. <laughs> for real. You know, um, but I guess, I mean, they're not unbeatable, but they're damn near invincible at home, though. But um, should be a good game. Again, shout out to the Patriots fans. Um, I'm hoping to stream this game. Of course, it's a 425 start. So uh, it's right in the middle there between the 1 o'clock games. And it's not prime time. 
which I'm happy with. You know, uh, so um, yeah, hope to see you guys on Sunday. Of course, I'll be uh, officially announcing if I'm streaming the game probably on Friday night or Saturday or whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm Crazy Dog 99. Let's go, Browns. And I'm out.